Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by and all those kind of things. I hope you're doing well. And today I'm in Luminar AI and I'm playing with the template and some editing and that sort of thing. I want to do a quick workflow on how I'm going to handle this particular image. Let me show you the shot. There you go. This was Trinity College in Dublin. And one of the first things I see about the photo is because this was shot with a wide angle lens, the building's kind of leaning back. And so by definition, you might want to go to Edit and go to Composition AI and fix those verticals by clicking on that button, which is automatic and easy. And then you say Done, and you're happy, right? But if you're going to use a template, note that templates may not include vertical fixes. And if that's the case, the template's going to be applied to the photo, and your composition fix is going to get wiped out. So that's what's going to happen here. I'm going to go into Big Screen, and there's this... Uh, Look here, template, uh, preset, golly, what do you call it? Template uh, called cold frame that was suggested as one of the um, AI-based recommendations for it. Anyway, I'm going to click on cold frame. It's going to apply the, that look to the photo, but you notice all my verticals got reset. So I wanted to do that on purpose to point out that if you're going to apply a template, do the template first and then go play with the composition. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to fix those verticals again. There you go. I'm going to straighten the photo just a tiny bit. And of course, I'm going to crop it because you see me do that all the time. I do like my 16 by 9 crop. I'm all set. I'm going to hit enter and I'm ready to go. Now, one of the things I liked about this template is it's kind of a desaturated look. And even though I love my big colors and all that, you know, here the obvious thing to do is kind of bring up some of that warm tone. But I kind of wanted to go a little bit muted. I really liked what it did to the cobblestones there. So if you look at the before and the after, the look of these cobblestones got really kind of that slate gray. And I just love that. So that's why I went for that in this photo. Also, the cool thing about templates, of course, like a preset or a look, it has a lot of enhancements already built in. So you can see these little dots over here. They represent tools or filters that have already been applied to the photo. And the dots on Creative and Pro indicate some tools there have been used as well. So I like the look of the photo already, but there's some other things I'm going to do. So I am going to go to the Pro tab, and Super Contrast has been used, but I'm actually going to go quite a bit higher on the Highlights Contrast. I'm going to go to like 94 or something. And then the balance, I'm going to make about a 14 or something like that. So if I turn this off, there was already a little bit of highlights contrast there, but it was very light. And as you can see, this guy is very bright here. That highlights contrast really pulled that back and brought back a bit more color to this guy. But also you can see the clouds a whole lot better. So there it is. It's not quite a white blob, but it's kind of close. There it is again before. And really bumping up that highlights contrast brought that back. So something to think about if you're editing a photo with a sky that's pretty white. If it's totally blown out, that's not necessarily going to help. But just playing with that and with the highlights balance can make an impact on the photo. And I like that improvement already. And that was the first thing I wanted to do is kind of get that balance back to the photo. So now I'm going to go over here to structure. And I, of course, want to add structure into some of the building and the uh, kind of the foreground, things like that. So I'm going to increase the size of my brush. And let's see here. Uh, actually, first, I'm going to turn on the masking tool. And then I'm going to increase the size of my brush because I want to cover a lot of ground in a little amount of time. And so I'm going to come in here and just kind of wipe over some of these areas and bring those uh, up in terms of details. I'm going to skip that building on the right hand side. I don't really care for you to take any, uh, you know, be distracted by it. And the things that will awfully often distract a viewer would be, you know, detail, color, brightness, things like that. So it's a little bit dark. I'm not going to pop the details there. I just wanted to mask them into this uh, central building and that foreground. And now that I've done that, I may take them down a little bit. I don't want to oversell it. So just a little bit less. I'm liking it like that. Now I'm going to go into color, and uh, as I said before, or maybe I didn't, but I'm going for a little bit more desaturated kind of look, even though I like my colors. And, you know, there's so much orange and yellow there. I'm going to come in here to this orange and just take that down quite a bit. I want to pull that down and just kind of tame that part of the photo. I think that looks a lot better. It was really just too much at regular orange level. It just kind of went crazy. Now remember, some of that came up because of my use of the super contrast on the pro tab but regardless i have a super you know easy way to control it here by pulling down the orange and while i'm at it i'm going to take a look at the blue as well and i'm going to do a little bit of blue uh maybe not quite that much maybe a little bit like that i don't want to overdo the blue but i still like having some of it so if you take a look at it there's before quite a bit more vibrant image especially those that orangey part um, on the building and after a lot more desaturated kind of tamer look and I like it. I think it fits the image really well. 
Now I'm going to pop over to the Creative tab, and I'm going to get Mystical, and I'm going to go about a 40 or something like that. But I'm going to go into the Warmth, and I'm going to take that down to about a negative 25 or 30, maybe 35. Yeah, something about like that. So there it is before. You can see a little bit more detail in the image. And then after, Mystical adds a little bit of shadow and a little bit of contrast and a little bit of softening. So it kind of undoes a little bit of what I did with the AI structure. I don't really care. I think it looks good and I like it a lot. So if you look at the before, definitely crispier and less shadowy. And after, a little bit more moody. It, it's, I don't know, I call it a mood filter or drama filter. It just creates that kind of romantic... Uh, happiness, whatever you want to call it. And now that I've got that done, I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to end on a vignette. So here I'm going to do like a negative 40 or something, you know, 43. And I'm going to bring the size down to like about like a 23 or so. And then I'm going to go get a little bit of inner light. And I don't want to do too much, maybe like a 15 or so, maybe a little bit less. In fact, maybe more like a 10. And that's just because the photo is already bright enough in the center. And if I go too high on inner light, those columns and that sort of thing are going to get really kind of blown out looking. I don't want to do that. I just I really just kind of shaping the photo a little bit in the vignette, I think, is a nice way to wrap that up. So if you look at the before, there it is. And then after the vignette, and in fact, I actually might pull back the vignette size and amount a little bit just because I want it to be a fairly subtle implementation. So I think that looks a little bit better. One more time, there's before and there's after. It's pretty subtle. If you're really looking and paying attention, you can tell, but it's pretty subtle. It's kind of hard to tell. So if you didn't see me just do that, you might not notice there's a vignette on the photo, and I kind of like that. Again, going for a subtle, kind of subdued look here, kind of a desaturated kind of look, but I like what it's done. A lot of this came out of that template, and by the way, a lot of times I will take a template and then click here and just hit save and keep track of that for myself for the future. And I've been doing that quite a bit because I'm finding a lot of templates that I like. So let me show you the before and after. There it is before, brighter, more saturated, just um, too yellowy brown, really, in the foreground especially. And now a little bit more of that steel gray kind of look, that slate color in the foreground especially looks good. And the desaturating those buildings I think looks pretty good as well. And now that I'm talking about that, I actually see a little bit more yellow kind of up here that that orange didn't get. So I'm going to go to color. And I'm going to go to saturation, and I'm going to pull the yellow down a little bit. And I think that's going to help as well with the building. So there you go. It's impacting the entire building, but it's also pulling some of like these areas up here. So if I turn that off, there's before. You can see is a little bit of a color difference between that upper section and that lower. And I didn't really notice it at first. Uh, whoops, let me turn this back on. There it is. It's desaturated that a little bit, and I actually might go a little bit more just to get a little bit more of that. The other thing you could do is go get a local mask and desaturate, and then just paint it in if you wanted to. Regardless, I wanted to go kind of a subdued, desaturated, kind of moody look here, and I was able to do that pretty quickly with a template and a couple of minor adjustments. Super contrast came in really handy in helping me pull back that sky, and the other things I did, I think, helped me get to that final look. So here's the before and after. There you go. Much different photo. I love the Composition AI and being able to fix those verticals. It's a huge help. But remember, if you're going to do that, apply your template first because the template may not include that. So that's it for this one. Quick, easy, simple. That's the power of Luminar AI and templates. Thanks for watching, my friends. Have fun out there editing. I'll see you later and adios.